Cloud infrastructure, we're plumbers. You know, no one wants to say, oh my gosh, this is such amazing plumbing. But they're very unhappy when it doesn't work well. We're speaking about cloud adoption and infrastructure with Clay McGorick. He's the executive vice president of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Clay, tell us about your role at, at Oracle and, and the things that you're focused on. I joined six years ago and, you know, in, in the middle of 2014. And the entire time I've been at Oracle, I've been very focused on uh, you know, solving some very fundamental problems for customers. Before I was at Oracle, I spent a bunch of time at Amazon, um, part of that time at Amazon Web Services. And, uh, you know, and I've always been an infrastructure person at heart. What's very clear to me is that cloud infrastructure is a massive enabler for the overall you know, world, the industry, um, for developers specifically. Um, but I also recognize as many, you know, many of your listeners uh, recognize as you recognize yourself, that while we have this amazing ability in cloud infrastructure, the vast majority of computing still happens on premise in customer owned data centers or colos. And a lot of those advantages aren't available to most of the workloads customers use today. And so the big focus that I had when I came to Oracle was how do we bring all of that amazing benefit uh, that cloud infrastructure offers to everyone. Clay, you spoke about cloud adoption. You're in touch with a lot of Oracle customers, very large ones. Can you give us a snapshot of where does cloud adoption stand today among large companies? Even as, as recent as you know, seven or eight years ago, uh, many companies weren't sure about the cloud. They weren't sure about maybe the security of the cloud. They didn't necessarily have a cloud strategy. When I talk to pretty much every company today, um, everyone has a cloud strategy, right? Um, they have a plan. But I think at this point, customers have tasted and experienced the benefits of the self-service um, productivity you get from using cloud infrastructure, from being able to outsource not just the software, but the operations of a service to where you can really focus on building your application rather than all of this other gunk that you don't really want to be involved in. And so while everyone in, that I talk to, and I think this is true throughout you know, pretty much all industries, everyone wants to make the transition to public cloud everyone is struggling with that transition. And you see that in the overall market penetration, right? Um, if you listen to different analysts, it's somewhere in the you know 10 to 15% range of all kind of server-side computing has moved to public cloud. What that means is that 85 to or 90% of you know, the things that run all of these businesses are still happening in a customer's data center or they're happening in a, a customer's colo. And so, that's why you see, I think, the major investments from all cloud providers in hybrid cloud and edge computing and a, and a myriad of options that accept the reality that, hey, it's really hard to just pick that stuff up and move it somewhere else. So how do we attack that problem? So are these adoption challenges primarily technical in nature or is it a matter of economics or is it a bundle together? The single biggest one from my perspective is that the transition from uh, existing customers' premises to the cloud uh, is not an easy transition technologically. Um, so to put that in, in perspective, a lot of applications were not architected for kind of cloud native principles, right? The cloud tells you what you should do is take your application, break it up into you know services, whether it's regular services or microservices. And so one of the ways that we're trying to attack that problem at Oracle is, well, how do I make the infrastructure more reliable? How do I make the services have the feature set that customers expect so that there's not a big gap between what they have on premise and what's offered in the cloud? So that's first the technological problem. The second thing that customers really struggle with is um, the, uh, the, the tooling and the operational practices, right? And I think the and, and that this is where some of the economics comes in and, and because if you just take your applications and you move them to the cloud, that's a really good first step, but it's not the end result. Because a lot of customers, right, it's not just about reducing the cost. A lot of what they're trying to do is they're trying to increase their velocity. And to increase their velocity, they have to change how they develop software, how they deploy software, how they operate that software. So I advise people, look, take your applications, move them to the target environment. And don't think of this like when you move it, you're going to get all the benefits day one. Now what you do is you incrementally refactor the application. Maybe you move the front end. 
Maybe you change the database layer. You change your operational practices, how you do patching. You retrain your operations staff. You move some of that responsibility from one group to the next. And if you take that as a much more incremental approach, I find that customers transition to the cloud is much, much easier. And that's also, by the way, what we found within Oracle, right? OCI is an infrastructure platform that underpins everything we do at Oracle. The, the whole company is transitioning, right? And, and over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll have everything within Oracle transition to OCI. And we're taking that exact perspective, move the stuff and then incrementally refactor. And it's going much better than trying to do as a big bang migration all at once. So that measured transition also makes it easier from the cultural mindset and people change aspect as well. Correct. If you have a large organization, you can't just expect to reinvent everything the next day. It's a big culture shift. It's a big technological shift. But what I find is that the companies that do well at it have a significant you know, business advantage because they have the higher feature velocity. They actually lower their costs and their employees are happy, happier because they're working on new relevant technologies, which give them, them confidence that they're building their skill set and they have more marketable kind of value in the future. Okay, but drill in for a moment on this economics question. So how should organizations think about cloud economics? The kind of state of the art in cloud infrastructure uh, prior to what we're pushing with, with Oracle is, well, if you, you know, compute is going to be expensive. So what you should do is you should rewrite your application so it scales up when you need it, it scales down very rapidly. You should put everything into functions or you should containerize everything and you know, yeah, we know that compute's expensive. And also we know that that bandwidth is really expensive, but we're going to give you amazing new tools to optimize all of that. And the consequence of that is that when customers are able to write new applications and take advantage of that technology, they do realize cost savings. But when they move existing applications, they end up with bills that are significantly higher than they expected. The approach that we take is, well, as an example, why can't you have a virtual machine that you can scale up or scale down while you're using it? Why can't you have a block storage volume that you can dynamically change the performance of while it's online? Why can't you have completely flexible infrastructure from a load balancing perspective where you don't have to pre-warm your load balancers, but you also can get up to super high capacity or very low capacity, all with very, very cheap costs. Why why is it that bandwidth in the cloud seems to cost 10 or 20 times more than it did when you were on-premise? And so... um, we're building in these fundamental technologies, right? We, we have what we call you know, flexible compute where you can pick the exact number of cores that you want. Later on in a couple of months, we're launching the ability to decouple the amount of RAM from your compute cores. So you can pick arbitrary sized VMs. And then later, uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, uh, you know, early next year, we're, we're launching the ability to um, auto scale those compute offerings dynamically. What that does is it gives a customer with an existing application the ability to put it on a VM. If it needs to scale up, it can. If you want to scale it down, you can. And you can turn that on automatically. Now, to get the benefits of the cloud, you don't have to rewrite. You can just bring your existing applications. Now, does that mean that that's the way you'd write a new application? Maybe not. But for a company who has all of this existing investment, we, as, as an industry, as a cloud providers, we have to help them with those things. And what we've been doing at Oracle is as we continue to bring out new compute offerings, as we continue to... Uh, make advancements in storage and, and networking technology as we're making significant advancements in our database, we pass on those savings to customers. So you're using uh, architecture and software and hardware design to drive the economics down ultimately. Completely. Absolutely. You drive. And, and, um, and it's not just the, the work that we've done uh, in our public cloud, right? If you look at, for example, some of the things that we're able to do with our hybrid cloud offerings with dedicated region cloud at customer, we're able to offer that at a price point that, and you can see this is the industry's response to this. You know, we have a couple of big customers and we launched it uh, last month um, that for, for a, a low commitment of about $6 million a year, you can get a full region of OCI in your data center. And people then ask me, well, what's the price of the services? Well, it's the same as the public cloud. And when they find that out, they're shocked. Well, it turns out that when you, take a step back and you actually design this in from the beginning, you hire the best engineers in the world, you get amazing results. And that's what we've been doing at Oracle for the last six years. Let's talk about the strategies for moving to cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, one cloud versus multi-cloud. 
what should customers do? If you are a new startup from scratch, the reality is you should pick a cloud provider, a single one. You should invest heavily in that. You should uh, pick the cloud that, that kind of closely aligns with um, your overall goals and where you can hire employees, right? I would never advise those startups to go multi-cloud. Um, if you are a uh, large corporation and you have a massive estate of different technologies from different on-premise IT vendors, and the reality is, and I think you see this borne out in the industry, you're not going to be able to work with just one cloud provider. So the problem is that based on what your customer profile is, that changes your strategy. Now, what I can say is that for the vast majority of customers that I talk to, right, traditional kind of Oracle customers, most enterprises, the reality is you're going to be multi-cloud and you're going to have to have a hybrid cloud strategy. And the easiest way to do that is to... Um, pick which workloads and which applications are gonna to move to which cloud provider. Make sure you have high speed interconnects between those cloud providers. Um, make sure that you know uh, you don't have things that are too chatty across them, right? You move uh, kind of centers of gravity to each one. You're gonna have some things that keep staying on-premise. Make sure you have high bandwidth connections from on-premise to your cloud providers. And then uh, you're oftentimes going to want some you know, evolutionary way to get there which is where things like the hybrid solutions by cloud providers, whether it's something like AWS Outpost or Azure Stack, or at Oracle, we have this thing we call Cloud at Customer, which is an umbrella brand for everything we do around bringing the cloud to the customer premises. And so we offer a couple of things like, for example, Exadata Database Cloud at Customer, which brings you our managed uh, database cloud service, including autonomous database into your data center. You have to pick based on the different functionality each cloud provider offers, what is the best fit for each workload? You mentioned Oracle Cloud at customer. What's the strategy behind that? And weave in regions as well. Oracle has been a very large on-premise IT provider for a long time. We work with our, our many, many, you know, hundreds of thousands of customers. And what they tell us is they all want to go to the cloud, but they also have a lot of stuff on-premise and they want, how can they bring some of the cloud awesomeness to on-premise? And so that's where we really have focused on our X data database cloud at customer, which brings a managed database service into your premise. And it builds on our massive success with our X data hardware and software integrated stack on premise. Um, and so customers use that and they can manage their cloud database, their, their databases on premise, but from the cloud. And the nice thing about X data database cloud at customer is you get to keep all of your data, including your backups on premise, if you like. And so you still retain full control of all of your data. Um, but we also, as Oracle, we're not just a database provider, right? As we know, we, we do applications. We have been a l large middleware player for a long time. And so customers are like, hey, I, I want more of your services available behind my firewall. And what we offer to them is what we call dedicated region cloud at customer. And the easiest way to think about this is it's an entire public cloud region on your premise. All of the services are there. As we launch new services, the new services show up in your region. Uh, where does your data live? in your data center? Where does the control plane run? In your data center. How much does it cost from like a pay-as-you-go perspective? It's the same prices that you pay in the public cloud. We find that customers are able to get a bunch of the benefits of the cloud on their premise. And then the fact that, for example, these APIs are 100% compatible with the cloud stuff, as they rewrite applications and they modernize, they can then take those things and move them to the public cloud in the future as um, their business continues to change. What are one or two quick uh, use cases? Or in other words, why is this important for customers? For example, with Exadata Database Cloud at Customer, um, you know, a lot of what we see is customers who need super high performance and high availability Oracle databases, but maybe they don't have the expertise to run them you know, by putting it together themselves, buying the hardware, software, doing it all together. They can just get an Exadata Database Cloud at Customer we ship it to them and it installs in a few days, and then they can provision Oracle databases, back them up, audit, patching, all that stuff is handled for them. And you get the benefit of autonomous database, which removes a whole lot of the functionality DBAs previously had to do around tuning your database, optimizing it for you. It makes Oracle database just massively easier to use. Around dedicated region cloud at customer, typically this is 
companies that may, maybe they're a telco and they have applications that they can't move to the cloud because they need to be in specific locations for low latency to their customers. Or perhaps you're in a banking or a healthcare industry that's heavily regulated and you've signed contracts about how what level of control and access you're going to have. Well, a lot of those customers, they want to move to the cloud, but they need, you know, they need that act, that control and security that they only they can provide. Well, that's where dedicated region cloud at customer really comes in and saves the day. When we built OCI, we knew that we were going to have hundreds or thousands of regions, not 10 or 20. So because of that fundamental engineering we did up front and the ongoing work we do to make sure that we have an architecture that scales up and scales down, that enables us to offer these services at a small footprint and then also be able to incrementally expand them for customers to as large as they need. From an engineering perspective, what are some of the challenges or the considerations that go into designing a system that has parity between what's in the data center and what's in the public cloud? For example, part of it starts with your actual rack design, how you design your fundamental hardware footprint. You want to be able to have a system that where the, the services themselves can run on as few different hardware you know, combinations as possible. Uh, second is the, the network design from a physical network perspective, right? Can you have a network that you can start small or start large and then incrementally expand? And so that involves, um, you know, how do you actually design the core spine and leaf switches? How do you actually have your routing protocols? How do you have a scalable both up and down edge network um, so that you don't have to plot down, you know, $100 million of equipment to be able to just spin up one of these regions. When people talk about scalability in our industry, they always think about scaling up, right? You, you, even when you just think about it, no one ever talks about scaling down. And if you just take that as a goal, we knew, hey, I don't want to tell customers that I can't give it to them. So we took it as a goal to be able to scale down. That's what's enabled us to roll out regions like public cloud regions faster than any other cloud provider. It's what enables us to do things like offer dedicated region cloud to customer. Um, and it's also what uh, enables us, as you, you'll continue to see us, just um, introduce massive numbers of regions around the world. Finally, what advice do you have for organizations who want to move to the cloud, but are facing the kind of technical, economic, cultural challenges, talent challenges that you described earlier. What advice do you have for those folks? Look, cloud infrastructure, we're plumbers, right? People want to, we want to build things that just work and people just accept that, you know, no one wants to say, oh my gosh, this is such amazing plumbing, but they're very unhappy when it doesn't work well. Um, a lot of what the transition to the cloud is, is it's not, it's not fancy rocket ships and amazing ideas. It's taking applications, it's moving them. It's incrementally refactoring them. It's every day waking up and operating and, and operationalizing and, and finding that efficiency. Um, you know, yes, you have to create a cloud center of excellence. You have to get hire people and train people to know how to use the cloud. But at the same time, being very deliberate about, you know, making choices, picking cloud providers and understanding what are their unique differentiators and what do they have to offer and take advantage of those things. I, I think that's all you have to do. Clay McGurk, Executive Vice President of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. No, thanks for having me, Michael. This was a lot of fun.